Another sitting week is upon us and it's going to be dominated by talk of Israel and Hamas, in particular after the Foreign Minister said that in her view, Israel should take steps towards a ceasefire. Joining me live is Australian Financial Review political editor Philip Curry. Thanks for your time. So mm-hmm. different to actually saying have one, but mm. I mean, it's, it's at least very similar. What did you make of these comments and the sort of impact they'll have? Well, I think the comments are reflecting a growing view <laughs> around the world, including the United States, um, that a ceasefire is warrant, warranted just for humanitarian reasons. I mean, you you can't have a view on this conflict, Tom, without being roasted by one side or the other, whether it's the pro-Palestinian side or the pro-Israeli side, because, as you know, this conflict's thousands of years old or hundreds of years old or whatever, and it's um, you know, and and the views from each of the protagonists are absolutely intractable. Um, so you're never going to get any semblance of, you know, give from either either camp. But I think in the broader the broader community, there's probably, um, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a consensus growing. It's not it's not to give a tactical advantage to Hamas, which Israel would, would say that's what a ceasefire would do. And it's, you know, it's not supposed to benefit Israel. It's just to benefit the people who are caught in this and get some aid in and get people mm. out. Uh, and that's a tricky part. Mm. So just about everyone would say, you know, they feel for the civilians. But even when you get to the hospital, it's hard to know what's really going on. Mm. So the, the, the El Shifa hospital is apparently running running out of power. Um, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, they say babies are literally dying without mm. that power. Mm. Israel says Hamas stopped fuel getting there because they want to use it for mm. military purposes. So it's just no, one yeah, a small example yeah. where you sort of go, well, um, yeah, how do you entangle that and decide? Well, you know, Hamas could release the hostages too. I think that's Israel's criteria for a ceasefire. So there you go, there's a nice simple solution. A yeah. um, bit of a win-win. So... Maybe we could start with that. Yeah. Mm. Is there a wariness of Australia getting too involved at something that doesn't really change? <sighs> Look, I don't think we are getting involved. We like to think we're involved. I can tell you the Israelis wouldn't give two hoots what Australia thinks. Even more so, um, you know, the Netanyahu government has no relationship at all with the Albanese government. We saw that when it took three or four weeks before Netanyahu would even take Prime Minister Albanese's call. And, you know, before all this happened, you know, we were fairly estranged with the Israelis. We had... You know, the Labor policy change before the National Conference on the Occupied Territories mm. and, and you know, Penny Wong sending a sharp note to uh, to the Israeli government over the, that very controversial, you know, so-called reform to the judiciary. So there was no love lost between the two administrations anyway. So I don't think they care what we think anyhow. Um, I but, guess involved in but we, well, spending time but we have, making it a headline issue. Well, we, well Australia, the Australian Labor Party has this innate ability to, you know, tear itself apart over mm. the Israel... Palestinian conflict and has done so over many years. Um, this is far more spectacular than anything we've seen. But, yeah, there's been some big blues. You know, there's Julia Gillard getting rolled by a cabinet over a UN boat, I remember quite specifically, when we lost a revolt led by Bob Carr and Chris Bowen and others. So it's, yeah. you know, but I think this goes above that. You know, this, this, this isn't just about Labor trying to sort of, you know, you've got the Greens taking the Palestinian side, you've got the... Um, the coalition's pretty firmly on the Israeli side and Labor's trying... They're in the government, they're trying to straddle the middle. Don't forget, too, trying to maintain social cohesion in this. Yeah. Well, One side or the other happened. doesn't do anything for social cohesion. Yeah. You're trying to you're trying to tell both sides, look, you know... Yeah, pretty well, pretty volatile when you look at Caulfield over the weekend. And, and meanwhile, a lot of people will say, well, what about the big issue for us, now the rate rise, cost of living? Mm. Is it getting to the point where Labor needs to start talking about actually doing something? There was the fuel excise cut, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you can't do anything that contributes to inflation. Like, look, look, in, in, in their defence, they're not spending a lot. Then, you know, like Chalmers has been quite disciplined when it comes to his budget surplus and resisting calls to spend that, but they're still spending, a, you know, the trouble is you've got to you cut spending to try and decrease. You know, we're going to look, you're going to look at welfare you know, and imagine that politically that's just suicidal. Mm. Yeah, the NDIS is just another story today how that's just running out of control, that thing. There's still a lot of programs, you know, that need to be cut, but they can't, can't be know, easily they're, cut. They're bringing yeah. the discipline infrastructure, they mm. say. But at the same time, the budget, as you alluded yeah. to, didn't fight inflation. So it is all up to the RBA. It because didn't it was fight neutral. inflation. It didn't fuel it either. No, yeah. but it didn't bring yeah. it down. So these yeah. blunt rate hikes... They're, they're um, terrible. They're, 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 they're harsh and and they're not affecting everyone. Um, I mean, I've, smash I've, some people and, yeah. up most, and sort of a large mm. cohort are fine. It's, it's, it's a, look, it's, it's a serious problem. I think the government does need us to tell them that. I was in the regions on the weekend where... People don't have a lot of money, and it's really, really noticeable. In some of these coastal towns uh, around here, Tom, you know, I was in the club on Thursday night. We go get a schnitzel or whatever. It's empty. You know, no, twenty-eight bucks for a parmigiana is a real cost. Mm. You know, with a beer, pot of beer as well, a schooner. So, um, 
you just it's so much more noticeable where starting to hit home out outside the cities areas, where there's yeah. a bit of dough and right. uh, and that that translates as one said to me it's, everyone is doing it tough and the pm was in washington having a banquet as the word he used so mm. it's, it will have political consequences all right phil curry thank you